Welcome to Lecture Online, and here, before we start showing a whole bunch of examples of Lewis structures, let's go and review the basic rules of what we should think about when we put these Lewis structures together. So, rule number one, the least electronegative atom tends to be the central structure. So, if we have a combination of different atoms forming a molecule, the one that ends up at the center of that molecule tends to be the one with the lowest electronegativity. Now, of course, the ones that are all the way on the left side of the periodic table, the alkali, alkali metals and the alkaline earth metals, they, um, they tend to be not part of that. They tend to donate rather than share because their electronegativity is so low. And so because of that, they don't tend to take on the central spot of the molecule. So we're looking more of atoms such as carbon, nitrogen, aluminum, silicon, which have a lower number of valence electrons and therefore um, tend to be uh, also lower in electronegativity, and those are the ones that tend to then take on the central spot. So that goes directly then in rule number two. The atoms with the fewer valence electrons, again, except for the ones that are part of the alkali metals or alkaline earth metals, they're the ones that then form that central structure. They're able to make more bonds because they're less likely to want to grab electrons to themselves, they're more likely to share electrons. And so these are the ones typically that form the central structure of molecules. Rule number three, of course, hydrogen, since it only has two valence electrons to begin with, it's not a good molecule, it's not a good atom, I should say, to be in the center of a molecule, so they tend to become just appendages. They tend to be just on the outside of the molecule, just added on with a single bond to whatever um, atom they can. Number four, the ones that are highly, highly electronegative, such as oxygen, fluorine, and chlorine, they tend to form and cluster around the central structure. So they're the ones that then form around it. So you end up with more of these molecules around maybe a single one of these as the typical structure for a molecule. Not, of course, an absolute, but as a typical structure, you'll maybe have one or two of these and a bunch of those clustering around the central atom. Okay, rule number five, bonds are created to uphold the octet rule. So we talked about the octet rule before, and sometimes when there's options on how, you can, how the atoms can bond together, they will prefer the one that will put eight valence electrons around each, each um, atom. So octet rule is something that kind of nudges the bonds into a particular type if there's more than one option that is possible with the electrons that are available. So yes, the octet rule is something that kind of guides the bonding of the, of the molecules. Uh, number six, molecules prefer a compact structure rather than a chain structure. So sometimes we have options. We could string them all in a long, long string, or we can have them clustered together. And what we find is that ultimately the clustering around more central structures is the preferred uh, energy state that these atoms want to be in when they bond together into molecules. And so we'll see less of the chain type structures and more of the clump like structures. That's rule number six. And rule number seven, avoid the separation of formal charges. Sometimes an extra bond is created, a double bond or a triple bond is created because without it you would have one atom that has a negative charge, another atom on the other side of the molecule that has a positive charge, which is what we call the separation of formal charges, and that's not a preferred uh, methodology in which atoms tend to bond into molecules. They tend to want to move those charges around in such a way that there's no separation of charges, and that's usually accomplished by taking additional uh, electrons into a bond structure and maybe making a second bond, a double bond instead of a single bond, even though technically speaking, following all the rules of Lewis structures, the both types of bonding can exist. So the ultimate result is that since atoms try to bond together into molecules so that they be in the lowest energy state, these rules tend to be followed pretty close to the T. And so by understanding these rules, now that we go look at some Lewis structures or some, or some molecules, you'll see why they look the way they do. We'll see why they're bonded together the way they're bonded. So make sure you remember these rules, and now let's go take a look at some, some bonds and some Lewis structures.